Well, Leo Turks, Jay Huber, Ben Manquist with you today. Uh, we're ready to rock this thing. How you doing, Ben? I'm good. How are you? Awesome. All right, we we got a great show for you guys. The Rick Perry video is. I should just shout that I was good. That was strange. No, that's good. That you're means like, you're vibrant. Good. Well, good. How are you? Yeah. <laughs> I was just you're, right, me- you're right there. Yeah, no, I was just at a meeting where uh, almost everything had to be preceded by vibrant. Let's have a campaign to do this. No, let's have a vibrant campaign to do it. <laughs> Okay, nonetheless. All right, listen, Rick Perry video, you don't miss it. Don't go anywhere. You, you got to see the Rick Perry video. You have to see it, okay? Second of all... Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's appropriate because it's uh, Rosh Hashanah. It is. It's yeah. perfect, actually. Right. That's right. Which is the... It's the, the holiday that your folks celebrate. Which is the... Uh, so, uh, the, uh, the, That's um, really unbelievable. Look at this. Look at okay, this anti-Semitism I'm, here from the Young Turks. <laughs> it's like the most important Jewish Passover. holiday of the year. Passover. Passover is a different freaking holiday. Something. Hitler. It's We're close. <laughs> okay, they, uh, they, they committed the suicide. They lit the candles. They overcame great odds. They it's, ate the, the, the it's flatbread. It's the Day of Atonement. That's it. No, it's not. God damn it. <laughs> It's the new year. The right, of course. New Happy New Year is Thank what I meant. Thank you very much. Right. Appreciate that. <laughs> okay. All right. By the way, we have the world's worst shoes. Everybody on the staff is here. Like every. Oh, dude, I, bar- I didn't know it was Rosh Hashanah until yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at least yeah. somebody used it as an excuse to go home. Come yeah. on. <laughs> anyway. So, um, all right. And then also in the program, uh, Rogue Trader. I'm going to get to him next. Uh, and then, oh, we, oh, the Ahmadinejad Al Qaeda fight is phenomenal, okay? It's awesome. And then finally, uh, we will um, possibly destroy our careers by taking on Google, which provides uh, the great majority of our uh, money. Okay, so <laughs> you have all that to look forward to in the show. Let's get started. Uh, Occupy Wall Street. Here's what I think of you guys I think you're awesome. Now, here's why. When you first started out, it was oh, this a bunch of hippie kids going in there. Oh, you're going to occupy Wall Street. We're not going to show you any attention. And all the media was <laughs> right, right, right. I mean, you're not named a Tea Party. You're not conservatives. You're up against the banks. How dare you, right? But you know what they did? They hung in there. Yeah, they hung hanging in there. around, hanging around. They got alligator blood. And you can't make them go away. I mean, through the sleet and the rain and all that stuff. And then next thing you know, it started to build a little bit. Now, people still talking about, oh, you know, on Saturday it was only a thousand people. Well, yeah, that girl from Wesleyan gets in a lot of shots. Yes. Like we run that picture a lot. It's right. been really good for Wesleyan. Right. Yeah. So, a thousand people, are you kidding me? It's You know how hard it is to get a thousand people to show up anywhere? Second of all, I remember the last Tea Party that was covered by all the national media had 24 people at it, okay? You got a thousand folks over here. Now, all of that, but the thing that really helped them was the excess and the abuse of the NYPD, particularly our friend, a new friend, Tony Baloney. <laughs> now everybody's talking about this. An old cop comes in, pepper saying everybody. We got a second video today. He apparently went nuts with the pepper spray, okay? And you know what happened there was... They just kept doing it until somebody in authority who, and they despise these guys, right? They can't wait to get them out of there. Somebody screwed up because their anger overflowed and like, ah, you didn't get the right permits. I know, but you didn't give it to me, right? So, oh no, I can't, oh, that's private property and I can't get too close to Wall Street and I can't do this and I need the permit a couple of months ago. Hey, you know what I did? Instead, I just did a protest. Now, like, to give you a sense of how much disdain uh, some of the media has shown, New York Daily News ca- calls them insufferables. This bunch ought to get down on their knees and thanks to America's capitalist founding fathers saw fit to protect the privileges of the dumb and obnoxious along Along with everyone else, mm. uh, and the Daily News. I mean, not even particularly conservative, right? So is that a but particular? Is that a? Uh, uh, it looks like an editorial uh, that's is signed by the paper. It appears, mm. uh, as best as I can tell. I'm shocked by how vitriolic it is against them. Quote: If the NYPD has made any tactical error in this episode, it was in being too tolerant. Okay. Mm. Oh yeah, I know. And here's another one. It is conceivable. That referring to the cop Anthony Bologna, who did the pepper spray, it is conceivable that he could have kept his spray holstered. Then again, he was surrounded by chaos. He made a judgment call. The rest is just second guessing, which I love because they only apply that to the cops. If, if uh, somebody comes in and there's a fight and it punches somebody in the face and breaks their jaw, you don't say, well, you know what? 
We can prosecute him for assault, but we'd be second guessing. A lot of Monday morning quarterbacking here in the prosecutor's office. Yeah, yeah. that's what prosecution is. Right. You second guess. Hey, should he have pulled that gun? Should he have used that gun? OJ's wife was with a different guy. You're going to make that call after the fact? I mean, there's a knife. It was there's, in the moment. I mean, yeah. he's heated up. Man. And now you're going to second guess OJ? So now, if you were guessing second Tony Baloney, well, it turns out you were right. Here's a second video where this is a different set of people. Remember, he pepper sprayed the four girls uh, and then ran away. We, who's been identifying him as, uh, as, as, as Tony Bologna? Uh, you know, now, there's, a, uh, there's no question about his identity. We know it's him. Uh, but I actually think that Anonymous went too far in posting his uh, address and his family no, member's address, et cetera. Course. Yeah, don't do that. There's no need for it. Look, you've got sympathy on your side. Keep it. Don't do things like that that take sympathy away from you, and there's no need. We got the guy, we it's know also, who it is. It's also, if you reveal his identity, great, that's what we want to know. His address is also, yeah, crazy, this is, this don't do a, that. This is, a, this is a public feud, it's not a private feud. His address is meaningless even if it doesn't, even from a, forget the sympathy. You just don't do it. It's not, yeah. just don't do it. It's not, it's not about going to his house. Right. Yeah, it's, it's just not about getting cool. the story out and talking about what's right. important. And he's not the Wall Street guy, and there's gonna be a process here, especially because of this second video. Now let's watch him do it again. He's gonna come in in a white shirt. the other video. When we did the other video yesterday with Anna, I, I thought this was true. So watch, he's gonna spray here, then watch him. He goes. Yeah. He, he's not policing. He's not policing. Cops don't, cops don't, cops don't shoot guys and then be like, mm, I, don't yeah. know, I don't know what happened here. I yeah. don't know what it is. He, and it was exactly the same last time. Is that I don't know, whatever those two cops in the white shirts, at the moment the people were pepper sprayed and, the, and you're citizens of New York, even if they'd broken a very, very, very minor law, had dropped to the ground suffering, right? And his idea isn't even to sort of cordon off the area. He just turns and walks away like I'm not in it. No, it's obvious that he's not trying to create order there. Nope. He's not part of the people that are policing the situation to get make things better. It's a hit and run, right? Yeah. And in fact, I think you can see in the video that it even gets in the face of the other cop a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's you cop, see it right cop, there? Cop's like, hey, what's Yeah, up? <laughs> because he's just spraying everybody. He's then, out of control. And, look, he's, and he's gone. He's gone like that other cop's gonna stay and deal with the aftermath that right. you just created, because right. right. that's his job. And, and of course, in the beginning, the NYPD was, you know, agreed with the Daily News, no second guessing, no, it was a, he was trying to maintain order, et cetera. Now, after the second video has come out, they're like, yeah, we might want to look into it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I think you might. And Look, I, I'm not saying it's a federal crime and he's got to go down to Guantanamo Bay, but obviously the guy is not doing policing, he's doing assaults. And so, should you look into it, it's the most yeah. obvious thing in that the world walk, that you that should. walking away is like, I mean, that's what that's what guys who do sucker punches do. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what that You come in, you punch, and then you walk away like, I don't know who did, who did that? Yeah. But hey, what's going yeah. on here? I don't know. Yeah, and you know what? It, the whole movement has to thank Tony Baloney, okay? because he's given them so much more attention and so many more people are covering it. So, and that's the great thing about people who do stupid uh, things like this, which is an assault like this, is that it's counterproductive, okay? If you go violent, it doesn't help, it hurts, right? And macing is definitely violent. Uh, so, uh, now. Uh, I don't understand very quickly just the to any tolerance, and I don't know that there is particular tolerance, but what, you know, I understand the, 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 the blue line that cops have. But I don't understand why, because I, I would be hard pressed for anybody to convince me that the overwhelming majority of cops working this protest had done so completely appropriately. Taking their time, very dull piece of business, spending the day making sure that these demonstrators stay in an area they told them to, treating them respectfully. And then you got guys like this come in and we all think that, that cops do these terrible things, but then they can't 
then if this is proven to be true, if what appears that we saw happened in both these videos, well then don't don't protect him. He's not doing you any favors. He's dis, he's disrespecting you. Yeah, I mean he made the situation worse. Uh, if you don't like to protest, he made them larger, right? Second of all, he got the other cops with the maze, right? Third of all, he makes you all look bad. There's no sense in protecting a guy like this. But my guess is probably a lot of them are quite frustrated with him. Like, what were you doing, man? I hope so. Because I, there's I, no I, way my a cop thinks, right. I hey, did, you yeah. should mace and run away. There's no, I don't think yeah. that they're, I mean, <laughs> will they protect him? I'm sure. Well, do they think that that was a brilliant move? I'd be surprised, right? Yeah. So now. Thanks, thanks Tony. Uh, yeah, yeah, really appreciate that. Made us look great. <laughs> yeah. Um, so now, uh, there's more of these movements. I love it. Now, the reason I love it, and apparently the rest of the, the corporate media does not like it, is because I think there's great frustration among the people. I mean, I, there's, I was shown some internal polling again over the weekend, and it, when you ask, hey, who do you think is responsible, Wall Street, what do you think about corporations, et cetera, it's not just liberals, conservatives, everybody seething mad, right? And it's like, but yet there's this weird, I mean, Ben, you tell me what it is, because, I mean, one of the reports I read with disdain about this thing, they said, well, you know, they're in funny outfits and stuff like that. Are the Tea Party dress up as like Benjamin Franklin and, and a snake and whatever they're doing, right? So there is some weird disdain that the, that the national I media, think, et cetera, I, I has think, for You know, this. I think we like, I, the national media, you know, Michael said a really smart thing yesterday because we were trying to figure out why it doesn't get covered. And for a long time, sometimes when, the, if you, you have a protest and there aren't that many people there, I have long argued that it shouldn't get covered because local TV news frequently would find nine people protesting something and be like, oh, there's our story, because we got nine crackpots on this side and the whole world on this side, and so they do the typical media thing of, the crackpots say this, everyone else says this, who knows, right? right? right. But now we've sort of, but they haven't done that here, and in part because uh, they're young, they're college kids, they're not in their demographic, they're not, they don't, and there seemed to be disorganization. There were these stories about who was in charge, and the fact is, no one really was in charge. No, but that's the thing. Uh, okay, that's, uh, let, that, let me just, just interject for one quick second. The Tea Party, totally disorganized. Nobody's in charge. But there Nobody were, can figure it out. So, yeah, but you great. Could, you What's could the call problem? and get a spokesman. You uh, People would talk on camera. There right, was, the, right. and here, what Michael said, and I think it was a great point, is that you couldn't call Occupy Wall Street spokesman, you know, <laughs> Alec Baldwin, and yeah. he would come out and tell you exactly what they thought and right. what it was, a couple of sound bites to go in your minute 10 piece in front of a live intro and a live right. close. That that didn't that didn't exist, so they didn't. You know quite what they know don't what like? Do. I think that's I think what you're saying, what Michael is saying is totally right. I they don't like the entropy, okay? They don't like the chaos. They're like, ah, I'm scared and confused by this. It's like, it seems like it's just a protest. It's politics. Yes. It makes it hard to figure <laughs> out. You know, of course, that, that on a daily basis, when you got a deadline, you got to turn stuff around quickly. Making people understand it and then understand the sort of the vast nature of the problems on Wall Street and the complicated nature of what they're protesting, right? Other than just, hey, man, they got to pay their fair share. They got to pay their taxes and they got to be held accountable. That, that's a, it, the thing of it is, they should get a spokesman, and the spokesman should just say that again and again and again and again. <laughs> totally, yeah. totally. Now, more Occupy uh, movements are springing up across the country, actually. Now, you can find it at, at Occupy Twitter, uh, I'm sorry, at Occupy Together on Twitter, uh, and you got Occupy Chicago, Denver, Lexington, San Francisco, Philly, the list goes on and on. Apparently there was one that was fairly disorganized, not that many people showed up in Chicago. Boston, much better organized. And Ben, they are now totally following what you're saying. They've got a, a grievances, they've got a spokesperson who's going out and saying these are the things that we want. And it's getting more and more no. organized. And by the way, honestly, this is exactly how the Tea Party got together. Later, the Tea Party, very quickly, then had massive money come in through billionaires to support them. This is not gonna have that, right? But if, given that it doesn't have that, the we, level of, of order that has come out of this anger is pretty good. The, um, now, in the, some in the media's defense, because I mm -hmm. don't like, just like, you know, I mean, I'm a big fan of cops, and so I'm hesitant when we decide the cops are bad because they're right. doing an incredibly difficult, dangerous job. And, and then this one guy comes in and screws it up for everybody. But in the media's small defense here, it has, it's been 10 days. 
Like they had, they did yeah, not. No, they no. did not I get a quick you. grasp on it. But yes. if they do at some point, uh, good, good. I think they that. have at this yes. point. Right. I think people are now starting to cover it because, thanks again, yeah. partly to Officer Baloney. And I suspect in the infancy of the Tea Party, there was probably not a great deal of coverage right. for right. at some point. Too. I, no, no, I agree with you. The, the ten days is not a tremendous amount of time. If they were out there for like, you know, like seven months, and there's like thousands of people in the media, it's like. It doesn't excuse whatever that human condition is, though, that causes that uh, New York Daily News uh, column, that New York yeah. Daily News editorial. Like, what is it that, you know what what I is think it it is? that scares people so much that they're like, they want to they wanna dismiss it? I have the instinct, too, that if it's new and young and different and it's confusing to you and people are angry, you, it's so tempting to say, you don't even know what it's like to suffer. Right. You know what? I have a bit of a con con uh, controversial uh, take on that. Right. Okay. Get ready for controversy. Uh, <laughs> Jealousy. Like, I think that guy writing for the Daily News, and it's a guy ultimately that's writing the editorial. It's uh, a, a, you mean a single person. Yeah, a single person. They let, like, they let women write the editorial. No, so. no, of course. Yeah. Well, although that guy sounded like a guy. But totally. anyway, yeah. um, I think that, like, they to some degree think, like, wouldn't it be great to be carefree like these guys? And they go out there and you know, and they're doing something, and they're having fun, and these goddamn college kids, I got a goddamn mortgage, and I gotta be responsible. Yeah, yeah you're right, and I just figured it out also. Because keep in mind, this is in a newspaper, right? Uh -huh. And this whole thing, in addition to not having a spokesman, is web-based, is sort of blog, viral media-based, it's not, no, no one official organized it. It is a threat to the very thing that everybody at a newspaper, the thing that I hate the newspapers are losing, is that anybody can go online, write a blog, and that's, we, we print it out, man, it looks like a newspaper article. Right. And so here's this thing of this world that they can't control. You know, sports writers, longtime sports writers across the country, they hate everyone who writes for ESPN.com, who writes a blog. <laughs> Everybody who's not in the nitty gritty earning it and working it. And here's this world that created this movement caused by Anonymous and the other blogs and the other- One of the, yeah. uh, one of the articles was like, I, I don't get it. This is some Canadian magazine and a right. website that started this. Hence, it cannot be legitimate. Who cares who started it? Grabbing, holding right. on to this world that you knew and you're uh, So and you're it goes, it. and I love this conversation because, look, think about it. It goes a little deeper. I think that's a million percent true, even more so. That guy writing it, I get the sense things every day I got to follow the goddamn rules, right? And, I, and there's so many rules in my life, and I played by the rules, and I'm here, and these some of my bitches aren't following any of the rules. That's why they get so mad about this permit thing. Like, when you were going from Wall Street to Union Square, you didn't get the right permitting a couple of months ago. I always have to get the right permit. If I want to go fishing, I got to get a permit. Right. If I want to mow the lawn, I got to get a right. permit. I want to put a friggin' direct TV dish on my own porch, and I got to get right. a permit. And right. you think I don't take crap from my boss? I sit there and take crap, and I get my ass kicked every day. But you guys go out to get uh, be heroes and protest it. Yeah, I'm getting pissed. Right. <laughs> yeah. See, I think that's part of what's driving it. And so, screw them. <laughs> I mean, that is, I mean, go forward for if you're the protesters and by all means do it. So now, look, let's go flip over to the other side real quick. Now, uh, there's this guy named Alesso Rastani. He's being interviewed by BBC. He's apparently an independent trader. Uh, he uh, is, I think he's telling it exactly as it is. Uh, he's being so honest, some have questioned whether it's a prank. Because they're like, how could anybody be this honest? Uh, and, and I don't think that's the case at all. I think this is absolute reality, for better or for worse, as you're about to see. Let's watch the first one. It's going to crash, and it's going to fall pretty hard. Because markets are ruled right now by fear. Uh, investors and the big money, the smart money. Uh, I'm talking about uh, the big funds, the hedge funds, the institutions. They don't buy this rescue plan. Uh, they, they basically, um, they know the market is toast. They know the stock market is finished. The euro, as far as they're concerned, they don't really care. They're moving their money away to safer uh, assets. Uh, I think that he's entirely right about how much trouble the eurozone is in. It's not conjecture. You see the money flowing out, and you see the bets made against, um, whether it's the euro or the individual governments, et cetera. And the bets against them keep growing, and the bets for them keep shrinking, et cetera. And at some point, is it going to crash? I mean, to give you a sense of the scope, the U.S. has a uh, what we consider a terrible deficit problem. Our debt is 62% of our GDP. For Greece, it's 144%.
okay, then it's not going to make it. By the way, this is really important for you to understand for context as we watch this. Uh, the reason that they're not saying, hey, you know what, let's fold it up, it's not going to work, Greece, you're now insolvent, let's move on, is because there's about $32 billion in bets saying that Greece will not become insolvent. And those people, those banks, those institutions are saying, oh, hell no, you got to pay those debts, otherwise we're going to lose a lot of money. So they exert enormous pressure on the government. $32 billion. It billion overall for Greece, Italy, I'm sorry, not Italy, Greece, Portugal, Spain, and Ireland in bets that they will not the go and solve the it. Del, right. The right. Del. Italy has $20 billion in and of itself on bets that they will not go and solve it. So that's what moves the markets. Now, he's going to begin to explain that. Let's go to the second part. We keep hearing that whatever the, the politicians are suggesting, and admittedly it's all been rather woolly so far, isn't right. Can you pin down exactly what would keep investors happy, make them feel more confident? Uh, that's a tough one. Um, personally, uh, it doesn't matter. That, that's, see, I'm a trader. Uh, I don't really care about that kind of stuff. I go with what the, uh, I, if I see an opportunity to make money, I go with that. Um, so for most traders, it's not about is that we don't really care that much how they're going to fix the how they're going to fix the economy how they're going to fix the uh, the whole situation. Our job is to make money from it. And personally, I've been dreaming of this moment for three years. Uh, I I have a confession, which is uh, I go to bed every night. I dream of another recession. I dream of another moment like this. Look again. It sounds like absolute honesty to me. If you read the Big Short, which I think you did. You know, uh, they lay it out right there. People make bets against the market, right? So they made bets against the housing uh, bubble, and then when the housing bubble crashed, they're like, win. I, and for most traders, they're not interested in how you're going to do. And it's perfectly rational, right? If, yeah, it's nothing. That's yeah, why. That's I mean, why the notion that it's a that, that it's somehow a, a what I'm, what's the word I'm looking evil? for? Evil? No, no. That this is a prank. That this is a, right, a hoax. Right. A hoax. Thank you. Um, the, why it, it wouldn't be hard to find this guy in reality? And I mean, and if he's a ho if it's a hoax, he's a tremendous actor. Right. I mean, like, and he nailed it. That's yeah. exactly right. And that's the logic of a trader. He said, "Why would I care about you? I I want to make as much money as possible. If I'm going to make it on the way down, then I make it on the way down. That's and if your pension crashes, I'm not in your pension. That's not my business, right? right. He wants to make money I, for his clients, right? And himself. And, and I don't blame him for that. But understand the ramifications for the rest of us. Okay. Now uh, another part here. I would say this to everybody who's watching this. This economic crisis is like a cancer. If you just wait and wait thinking this is going to go away, just like a cancer, it's going to grow and it's going to be too late. What I would say to everybody is get prepared. Uh, this is not a time right now to um, wishful thinking the government is going to sort things out. The governments don't rule the world. Goldman Sachs rules the world. Goldman Sachs does not care about this rescue package, neither does the big funds. That is a million percent right. because. Again, this refers to what I was uh, explaining earlier, where Goldman Sachs says, oh, no, 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 we've got money in Greece. You're not going to make Greece insolvent. So now you say, why does the government care? Why does the Greek government or the German government that's bailing them out care about Goldman Sachs? What power do they have over Goldman Sachs? The same power they used in 2008. They come back and go, okay, well, you can do that. And then, okay, I crash. But if I crash, I'm connected to every other bank. And then your Deutsche Bank crashes and your Societe Generale crashes, et cetera. And we all crash. And then you got a depression on your hands. So either you pay me or we go down that route again. Okay, but if then by his his logic would maintain that the solvency of the system and the maintenance of the system and of some sort of safety net is the fact that okay, Goldman Sachs rules the world, and if there's a giant crash, that Goldman Sachs is not interested in that. that that's right. not going to help them. I, and I guarantee and, and you it, right I'm now, just, he's separate from Goldman Sachs. An individual yes. trader is separate from Definitely. Goldman Sachs. So those points, in some sense, seem to. Contradict each other. No, no. He's saying, look, you can see that Goldman Sachs wants to prop up these debts, right? Because they're the ones that are getting paid and they don't want to not get paid. And that's why you're all having to do these austerity, et cetera. But it's not going to fix it. And there are other smart traders betting against that, apparently including him. Yep, clearly. Right? <laughs> saying, hey, you know what? You're not going to be able to solve this no matter how much you pay Goldman Sachs. And what Goldman Sachs must be doing at this very moment is thinking of the worst case scenario. Now, they will have bets well, on both sides. By the way, if they were thinking of the worst case scenario, then that's a positive develop for them. Because apparently, before the previous crash, 
they never really thought about the worst case. No, scenario. no, that's to be fair to them, that's not exactly true. What they uh, because the 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 bailout was the worst case. No, it, they so they did this. They said, okay, we we will make money off of this toxic stuff, and then we will bet against the toxic stuff. Okay, so we're covered either way, but. But we know AIG is full of crap and they're not gonna be able to pay us. So we got two different insurances on that. One, we'll take private insurance that AIG crashes. So if they can't pay us because they crashed, we get paid by the other guy. And we'll buy the government. So if both of them crash, we'll get bailed out anyway. So that's what they must be doing right now because it's gonna crash again. So they gotta be thinking, even beyond that, okay, we've got all the insurance this way, this way, we get paid no matter what, but, what if no one can pay us, and what if the government can't pay us? Then what do we do? Well, then what do they do? Nothing. Right. Then we're all screwed. <laughs> right, right. But at that point, they already have the three to six hundred million dollars a piece in their pocket. They go home to their mansions with the big gates, and they call it a day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm telling you. Look, last thing from this guy because. This is also important, and in some ways he sounds like me, that I've been saying for this for like a year or so at least. Let's watch. Actually, what I would, I, I would actually tell people, I want to help people. Uh, people can make money from this. It isn't just traders. What they need to do is learn about how to, how to make money from a, a downward market. Uh, the first thing people should do is protect their assets, protect what they have, because in less than 12 months, uh, my prediction is the savings of mi millions of people is going to vanish, uh, and this is just the beginning. So, I would say, be prepared and act now. The biggest risk people can take right now is not acting. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to be a fear monger or anything. I just think it's absolutely true. Yeah, I know, but it's tough because you hear a guy say that and you're like, you're desperate for a follow-up question. Uh -huh. Like, okay, act how? <laughs> yeah, I know, <laughs> but the thing is, he doesn't have a good answer for that. I mean, he might be making some down bets and stuff. Right. He can do put options that you can't, you know, mm -hmm. but... The, and I swear to you, I have conversations with my friends who are who are who think this is gonna happen and they're trying to play this out and they're thinking, and some of them work on Wall Street, and they're thinking, okay, well, what if we go into gold? But gold is also, in a sense, just almost, it only has the value that we give it. What, well, what if we just take it out and hide it in our mattress, okay? I mean, these are the conversations that are happening. But then the dollar gets devalued at some point, so then that doesn't even help you. And the, unfortunately, there isn't a great answer for when everything crashes. Because you say, all right, I'll put it in real estate, but then the real estate crashes, right? So I don't have a good answer for you. All I do know is don't willy-nilly and I'm not saying tomorrow, but I, I agree with his timeline. It's about, I would say 12, anywhere from two months to 14 months, right? I think it's gone, right? And so- What's gone? Gone. What? Ben, you don't get it. Poof. <laughs> gone, okay? <laughs> so for example, no, no, so, you know, all kidding yeah. aside. So for example, in the last crash, we lost $7 trillion in home value. Mm -hmm. So you had a home, you lost 25% of the value, poof, gone. Holy cow, now you can't even pay the mortgage, so the whole thing's gone, right? So there goes all your savings. Number two, your pensions. The pensions, listen to me, this is the most important thing. And, and I don't know what you can do about this, but the pensions are the suckers at the table. These Wall Street guys, they just keep moving musical chairs. They know they're gonna leave the pensions holding the bag. That's what happened last time. We've done how many stories about how Ohio's uh, you know, state workers lost eight billion or whatever they did, I don't remember the exact numbers now, and the teachers of Arkansas lost this much. And that's the tip of the iceberg. The real losses are coming, because they're gonna say, oh, the stock market, yeah, it lost half its value. Funny thing is, we got our money out, but you didn't. Your pension is now worth half of what it was, okay? That's what I mean by poof gone. And what do you do about it? Well, the first thing you should do, in reality, is a political revolt. That's why I paired it up with the Occupy Wall Street. I mean, if you've got money in a pension, you should be the most activist shareholder there is in the country. You shouldn't let them, you know, say, oh, don't worry, we got this in a, the Wall Street guys that are managing this pension, they're top notch, they've given all the money to the right people like Rick Perry. You know, one of the stories we did last week, Rick Perry, as governor of Texas, uh, his biggest uh, cash prize for his people that invested in his campaign, donors into his campaign was, I'll let you manage the $11 billion uh, teacher's pension fund in, in Texas. So you give me a couple of million in campaign donations, I let you manage that. You do whatever the hell you would do with it. I don't give a damn, right? If it crashes, it crashes. But you're gonna make tens of millions off of managing it, right? So 
if you got your money in those pensions, I mean, that this is the time to become a citizen, right? And because this affects you personally. You go make sure that those pensions are in the right places as best as you can. There are no easy answers, unfortunately. But that, I, I, I'm, I'm with this Why guy. Why is a politician's friends able to manage the pension funds? Like, <laughs> well, it's, a, it's a, a, unbelievably outrageous, yeah. except this kind of legalized bribery has just become absolutely uh, normal operating procedure in America. Like, th that's why I care so much and why I say the only issue that matters as much, look, to me, financial reform is the second most important issue, and I think it's going to destroy the world. How can it be the second most important issue? It's the most, because the most important issue mm -hmm is getting our democracy back. Because if we can't control our politicians and they only answer to the rich donors, well, that's why we're gonna crash. That's why this whole financial system's set up wrong. I mean, what have been in a system where a guy can go by a governor of Texas or the president, well, what, can, what the hell can we do? In I mean, a system. <laughs> in a, but seriously, last thing. It, and I heard this, so I was, uh, over the weekend I was at Harvard, uh, not a big deal, uh, at, no, at, a, <laughs> at, a, at a conference, right? By the way, you should check out the top vlog. If you think, ugh, how I screwed myself over is hilarious, uh, check it out on the top vlog. Okay, anyway, so uh, we're at a conference for a constitutional convention, and two different people made this brilliant point. Uh, according to James Madison, during the time of the revolution, about a third of the people were on the revolutionary side, a third were for the king, and a third were in, you know, didn't know, ambivalent or indifferent, right? Uh, today, the approval rating of Congress is 12%. So during the American Revolution, far more people were in favor of the king <laughs> than are in favor of supposedly our Congress right now. The American people get it. There's something wrong. Congress is not working for us. But the politicians and the media are like, yeah, who cares? That's working for us. You know what Rick, uh, excuse me, Rick uh, Perry, uh, Chris Christie's one of his most powerful points will be that look at me, I'm a governor and a Republican governor in a Democratic state and I'm making it happen. Like that's a point that will unquestion, this is why the guy needs should run. I mean, mm -hmm. if I'm Chris Christie, I don't know, what, what's the issue? Yeah, like, I know. What's he waiting for? What, are you, what are you waiting but, for? It's not going to get better than this. And uh, let, let's address Chris Christie. Yeah, it's a can compelling we come point. Back? Yeah. And by the way, Chris Christie supported by Wall Street bankers in New York, totally. number one supporters. It's a Republican. So yeah. All right. So let's come right back. Back on the end, Turks, Jake, Ben, and Anna with you. Uh, before we move on to the next story, uh, we're gonna. Uh, I understand there was a, an interview that Ben conducted with Rick Santor. I have a whole bunch of interviews. I've already. I interviewed uh, Michelle uh, Bachman. Uh -huh. I got. Uh, I got. Uh, uh, her hair. Uh, what's his uh, name? Herman Cain. I have a good interview oh, set really? up with Herman Cain and you, a good and a good one with Rick Perry. Uh, you mean Herb Cain, of course. Herb Cain, exactly. <laughs> That's Sarah what Palin, Sarah Palin Sarah Palin would call All him, right, yeah. so if you call Ben's number, this is the actual voicemail you get. Listen. If you call. Here, let me give you the number. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So, yes, if you will. Now they'll be able to hear the tones and they'll trace it. Mmm. Mm. I'll be inundated with people. You know what's funny is that, so we do this online show, and we figured out a hundred different technical things we have to do. We're having trouble dialing a phone. Yeah, we did it, we did it. <laughs> yeah, we did it during the break, we practiced. 2012 coverage continues with former Senator Rick Santorum. Welcome. Great to be here, Ben. You <laughs> seem gay. Uh, I'm not, and why would it matter if I were? Well, Ben, it's contagious. No, it isn't. Oh, yes, it is. Being gay can be transmitted. Much like scurvy. Scurvy isn't contagious either. Ben, you are so naive. You need to go back to school and check your science. <laughs> I'm just kidding. There's no such thing as science. Well, Senator, we're out of time. This has been an interesting conversation. <laughs> My pleasure, Ben. Don't touch me. At the tone, please record your message. Oh, fantastic. Uh, I'm going to get a message. All right. A couple of things. Uh, number one. I loved it the first time. The 28th time, it's a little long. Yeah, it's a little long. You, how, who doesn't know that you can't hit one on a message? Me. Is yeah. that what the trick? On any message, when somebody says, hey, hit one, you'll get the tone. 
Really? I didn't yeah. know it was with every message. Every message. Oh. oh, okay. And then my second. Certainly on Verizon. Well, that yeah. vitiates my second pet, uh, point that I was going to make. After the message is over, what drives me crazy is, if you'd like to hang up, press yeah. three. I know, I, I, know, I know how to hang up. I know up. how to hang a phone up. I've been hanging a phone up for years. <laughs> right, if you'd like to continue, press one. Yes, I'm gonna continue, just give me the goddamn beat. Yeah, just the tone, that's just, it. That's it, that's, that's it. all we need. Right, if yeah. you'd like to make another call yeah. later in the day, press five. Yeah, yeah, if you'd like to make a call <laughs> later in the day, look up the number, turn your phone on, dial the number, talk to your friend. <laughs> that doesn't even annoy me as much as when you're in the middle of leaving a message. It's not even a long one. It's a short message, but it interrupts you in the middle and it tells you, um, if you like this message, uh, press three. If you don't, you can re-record, right? And it's like, I don't want to re-record this. And then you don't know. Have you, you, you don't re-record messages sometimes? Never. Oh, I totally sometimes have re-recorded messages. I probably re-recorded <laughs> 35 messages in my life. That's crazy. I re-recorded a message last week. Because you're like, call a girl, and you're like, hey, yeah, hey, okay, anyway, you know, I'm just kidding. Uh, so I'll see you Tuesday. I mean, I won't see it. Well, we'll see. It'll be, you could, well, if you call me back. Anyway, okay. I get, you just, you get, and then you're like, if you relate your message, I'm like, fuck, I don't like that message. <laughs> yeah. And then you're always like, yeah, it's Ben. Uh, call me back. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's going to be awesome is the one that it goes through anyway. Yeah. Sometimes, it's just, sometimes I just run out of time. Like, I talk so much that mm -hmm. I just run out of time. Uh -huh. You know? And then, which brings me to my mother, and I don't know. I just, I feel like I can't talk to her anymore. I just, <laughs> Which is ironic, because these days you don't even have to leave a message. Right. Before, you'd have to leave a message, because it didn't identify who you were, and you right. had to say, I am Jank Uger, and here's my number, and call me back. Now it's like, yeah, I know, it said Jank Uger on my yeah, phone. Yeah, those messages <laughs> are the worst. I hate when people leave messages, and all it says is, hi, I'm Jank Uger. Those are so annoying. Yeah, I don't leave. I, I don't leave anyone messages. Mm -hmm. Really, I mean, unless it's someone. Unless I you want to re-record. Unless, it's, but I mean, unless it's like <laughs> someone specifically about. A, but I mean, I like I call you. I don't think I've left you. I've left you probably three messages in six years. Right. So, so one question: When are you guys going to get to any stories? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, well, let's just re-record. Uh, yeah. Right. Okay. Start over. Uh, anyway, uh, so Anna, go. Relevant Magazine, which is an evangelical magazine, did this recent article about how young Christians aren't waiting uh, to get married in order to have sex anymore. Okay? It wow, found out. Scandal. Scandal. Okay, but the numbers are actually a lot higher than I expected. It turns out that. Um, oh, it's not me. It's awesome. <laughs> the numbers are actually a lot higher than I expected. It turns out that 80% of Christians end up having sex before marriage. And of course, the reason why is because more and more people are getting mar married later. So. Yeah, it's one thing to say wait until you're 20, mm -hmm. it's another thing to say wait until you're 40. Right. Absolutely right. And least surprising result ever. But I'm glad that they did it because I hope they wake up. Like, like, and please stop with the hypocrisy too. Like, because once they get married, they immediately forget that they had sex before marriage. Right. And they will turn around and then advocate for policies of not having sex before marriage. When who are you kidding? Everybody's having sex before marriage, and you did too. I mean, eighty percent. You could advocate for no sex before marriage all you wanted if there were no ramifications for it. Uh -huh. You know, if it if it didn't mean uh, that you were saying to kids that they shouldn't use birth control. Or if it weren't sort of, if you weren't, if you were suggesting that sex was evil mm -hmm. in the process, which is what they're doing, which is that's actually dangerous. In this story, there's a woman named uh, Maria somewhere in the story. Yeah, um, Maria. She's a 20 year old college yeah, student. She's a 20 year old college student. Uh, where's the, uh, oh yeah, here it is. So, so Maria, uh, it seemed everyone in my life, older and younger, she says, had done it. Um, uh, in fact, I waited longer than most people I knew and longer than most, both of my sisters, even though we were all Christians and came from, good, from a good home. Like, yeah. like, like, what do you mean came from a good home? I came from a good home. I had sex as soon as possible. Yeah. Anna came from a good home. She's, she's like a whore, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's not, that's not, what, it's not good home does not equate with waiting to have sex. Uh-huh. Uh, so, no, it is insulting, right? So, because it, it, it says something theoretically about my parents. Right. That since I tried to have sex immediately upon reaching puberty, that somehow they were bad parents. And what it in fact says about them is that they were homo sapiens and gave birth to another homo sapien. That's right. Right, and right. you know, and that's 80% of evangelicals when you consider everybody, and that's 80% of evangelicals admitting it, mm -hmm. right? Well, the real number is gigantic, right? 100%. And, but that's the whole point that Ben is making, which is that 
like they make everybody feel like they're whores or sluts or there's something wrong with them for wanting to do something innately human. Right. It's as if an entire religion was based around making fe people feel guilty <laughs> for breathing. They're like, oh, with the oxygen, there you go again, you slut. <laughs> in all the time, oh, there again, breathe in again. God, what a bunch of whores with their oxygen intake. Okay, you're going to burn for that. <laughs> Did they catch me? Did they catch me? I held my breath for as long as I could. <laughs> oh, sure. I By the time you I did. got to college, everybody was breathing. <laughs> right. I was freaking blue. But think about how damaging it is for kids who buy into that. Kids who end up getting married at like 15 because they want to have sex, right? Right. It definitely has a, a damaging effect. So Average age for a marriage in the U.S. has been increasing for 40 years consecutively. It just keeps getting longer. Yeah, and, and by the... And by the way, um, I always think like, I thought this was a free country. And that's the whole paradox, to get serious for one quick second, on this fundamentalist conservatives. They don't, I mean, they're, they miss the whole point of the country, right? I mean, it, it's, so you're going to tell me how to live my life? Like I was supposed to be a virgin until I was 38, because I got married at 38. I was supposed to be a, mer I mean, I had enough trouble in my life, okay? <laughs> And if I had stayed a virgin until 38, I would have become a suicide bomber. You were already an aggressive dude. Can you imagine? Oh, my <laughs> like God. Like, all that pent-up. Right. <laughs> I don't know if it would have been an explosion or an implosion, but, but it, well, I'm not going to make it. That's the, that's the reality. Anyway, yes, forward. A church in New Jersey called Liquid Church uh, collects $30,000 a week uh, from their three congregations, and then they do something interesting with the money. We have a local news report that uh, gives more information on the story. Let's watch. Like they do every Sunday, members of Liquid Church in Morristown made offerings into popcorn buckets. But just moments after they gave, the buckets came back. Every single one's going to reach in and take out one envelope, okay? Everyone at Sunday service was told to take an envelope with either a 10, 20, or $50 bill inside. We usually give to church. Um, church doesn't tend to give to us back. This church gave out a total of $30,000. Pastor Tim Lucas calls it a spiritual stimulus package asking parishioners to trust that God, not government, will provide economic recovery. It's not a throwaway. It's not a waste. We really believe that their creative talents are going to use it in a way that benefits the entire neighborhood. So there's a great irony there because, you know, they, they don't like the government. They don't want the government to do handouts. But they're, they're not against handouts, I suppose. They think handouts are a great idea just as long as the government doesn't do it. And I, to them, there's no irony in that. But it, I find it ironic because... So what if we all decided together to do that collectively, right? Why would that be intrinsically evil, but you doing it on your own? It's like, because they, I, I guess they don't trust that government is a form of democracy, I, that we are deciding together in a democracy to do that, right. to be charitable to one another when we need it, right? Uh, I guess they just don't believe it's democratic. Uh, I, I don't know. First of all, I don't know that this church was that, that, they, that they were uh, that a particular anti-government slant. That, but they said they, instead of the government, you yeah, know, they, they were just saying that instead of the government, in this case, because it seemed like it was a relevant part, like it could have been asked in the question. It's just nothing in the actual text of the story indicated that their idea was just that hey, we're gonna. This is how, to me. It was like that. You don't think of your church as Jimmy Swagger taking money and you, then he lives in this big house. I'm like, hey, you take your money. We're mixing it back. You're going to get it back. And your instruction is go do good with this money. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't don't go to Applebee's afterwards. Well, there's, there's nothing wrong yeah, with that. Yeah, it's good. I like yeah. it. Uh, no, of course. And the thing is, keep it real, next Sunday a lot of people are going to show up. Because they're going to think, oh, you know what? I did it once. You never know if he's going to do it again. And right. it's going to increase attendance. And maybe it's a good thing for everybody. Everybody right. likes opening an envelope where they get something. Mm -hmm. It's a great, it's an exciting thing. Unless it's a bill or no, a subpoena. Yeah, that's a fair point. But I mean, like an envelope, like any time a restaurant gets a little giveaway where they're like, hey, if you, you know, I go to one where they're like, come back between these dates. They're mm -hmm. always, they're doing that a lot. They're like, mm -hmm. come back in July. They'll do that in in, in, in March, they'll say, come back in July and whatever in here, open it when you're here and you you get the prize that's in there. It'll be like 25% off or 50 And I'm always like, I can't wait to July. It's going to be so exciting. <laughs> you're crazy. <laughs> I totally disregard all coupons now. You know why? Because when you come back, they're like, oh, but if you read the back, it turns out that it doesn't apply on a Wednesday at 830. 
But Just you know, any other back. time. It's fine. Read the back and then follow the rules. Like coupons are awesome. I no, used to be a... against coupons. Now I'm like obsessed and addicted to them. I like buy Groupon all the time for dinner. Groupon's going on. Oh, you under, use it a lot? They are. Oh, I, yeah. I, I love get Groupon. it. I don't. I don't. I don't use it. This place They're is so good. They really are. Really, yeah. I went out for like this fancy sh- uh, sushi dinner that I paid twenty two dollars for. Really? It was amazing. Yeah. It was like a sixty dollar value. Uh, I'm going to make a prediction here. Uh, Groupon going under. I hope not. I really like that. Uh, no, no, it doesn't matter. It's okay because Amazon's doing yeah, it, yeah, Yelp yeah, is somewhere. doing it, everybody's mm-hmm. doing it. That's part of the problem with Groupon. Groupon just admitted the other day, they're like, yeah, our revenues are half what we stated. <laughs> is that a problem? <laughs> okay, I are. didn't know what the, the catchy part of the uh, word was for, for a very long time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like I was like, oh, I know I get Groupon, like group on. Uh-huh. And then I was Does like, that? yeah, because I, I think I was, I, I might have been here on the show when I figured it out. We were talking about maybe with Michael. Uh-huh. And I was like, yeah, they're like coupons. Holy shit, Groupon. That's why they're called that. <laughs> Jesus, man. I don't know who's Stuff just today. sometimes doesn't take. Right. And yeah. us with the not knowing you could press one. Anyway, let's squeeze one more story. All right. The URL, TeaParty.com, actually belongs to a Canadian rock group that broke up seven years ago. That's a funny story. And it is a funny story. And it turns out that now, of course, they're considering thinking, uh, they're considering selling this URL, right? And it could sell for as much as $1 million. The most interesting aspect of the story is that the rock band is now thinking, well, maybe we don't sell it. Maybe our group gets back together and we actually use the URL. To promote our band. Mm. Yeah, wrong again, Bob. Right, totally. Sell totally. it. Sell it immediately. Here's what your band isn't going to make a million dollars. Okay. So it was like the greatest thing you ever did was putting that band together and buying that URL. Cash in, man. Okay. Their Please band, listen to me. Their rock band is known for Middle Eastern fusion, and they oh, created. Oh, 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 come on. Please, please take the money. I'm begging you, take the money. <laughs> they created something known as the Moroccan roll, which sounds kind of delicious. <laughs> Moroccan I, roll, like I, I'm thinking about a sweet treat or something. No, like no, that. I hear you say it's like, it's like chicken uh, pies that they do, which are actually yes. sweet. And like I'm thinking in the form of a sushi roll. And oh, plus I get rock and roll, Moroccan roll. I get all of it. Sell. <laughs> Sell immediately, okay? And by the way, then trademark Moroccan Roll, which you, later you'll also get a million dollars for. Seriously. Okay. They, uh, they, they, want the na- they want to lend the name to Stephen Colbert or Jon Stewart and have them dispel of some of the stuff that the Tea Party says because they're, they're liberals, these guys. Oh, that's a great point. So, they're, then, yeah, so they're a little bummed sell out. Sell it! But they don't. Sell it. But they like having it. Like they feel like, oh, should we give that's it to a, the that's Tea Party? A good, that's, a, that's a good point. Sell it! <laughs> yeah, totally. Sell it! Yeah. You're crazy. A million bucks. I'd sell it in a second. Yeah, the Tea Party is going to live or die whether or not it has the URL teaparty.com. Yes, yeah, they'll just, be fine. Yeah, sell it today because yes. they might see our story and change their mind. And the other thing I, 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 I would think about it if I had it, it's like, great, I just stole a million dollars from the Tea Party. You know what That's I was, what I was thinking, too. Like, right. oh, you took a million bucks to the URL. By the way, this is what one of the band members says as he's talking here about selling the name. He was the guy who said we wanted to give it to Colbert or John Stewart. It's Canadians were somewhat sensitive to all the criticism of socialized medicine, so mm-hmm. they don't like the Tea Party. God bless them. Uh, an ideal outcome, he suggests, would be for George Soros or Ari- Ariana Huffington to swoop in with a strong offer. <laughs> but it seems likely that the top bit- bidders will be looking to develop an invaluable fundraising portal for a Republican candidate or political group. Yeah, the Tea Party might want it. Um, and then he says, nothing has been ruled out. But he's like, hey, man, we got families. <laughs> okay, yeah, good. Yeah. He's going to sell it. Yeah. And here's who's not swooping in. Ariana Huffington or George Soros. <laughs> Imagine George Soros. <laughs> Although, maybe. TeaParty.com. They no. get a porn site. <laughs> that would be funny. You know, if anybody swooped in, it'd be Vivid Entertainment. Uh-oh. Uh, and maybe you can get a decent offer from them. We might have. They got a, all that Kardashian <laughs> porn money. We may be yeah. onto something here. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, we are done. We will do a, a post game for you guys. We do not know what's in it, but that's part of the fun. Uh, come and find out with us. Young Terps. <laughs>